Welcome back to Turnips and Tornadoes. I'm Dan. And I'm Joanne. What are we making? Well, we thought we would start making some Thanksgiving recipes, oh. some of our family recipes for Thanksgiving. Very good. So no big turkey this year? No, no turkey. <laughs> no ham. <laughs> but we are going to be making some other things that are not plant-based, mm -hmm. but they're vegetarian. Yes. Such as cornbread. Cornbread. And, then, and this can be made plant-based, but today we're going to do the traditional way, but it can very easily be made plant-based. Okay, cornbread. So, okay, so you're going to put one cup of flour into this larger, larger bowl. This and I'm is, gonna start when on I the see liquid. this, I think of Thanksgiving because you I only use put our then. dressing and yeah, stuff then. I only use it then. Family heirloom dating back to the 1800s. I wish. <laughs> it is from a, a flea market type place. Uh, I like my story better. I do too. It's, so, it's, yeah, it's a family. Yeah, <laughs> a flea market. What did you pay for it? You remember? I think I paid $25. That's a it. lot, isn't and, it? Yeah, that's a lot. And that was probably 15 or more years ago. So, when you amortize that, it's not, I guess, too much. No, it's not. And kind of fluff it up. Yeah. Okay, and there, you're going to use that one. And I'm going to go ahead and start the liquid ingredients. Now cornbread, we eat cornbread probably once a week, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, because we eat a lot of beans and that's a side dish for a lot of things. Absolutely. What was the other thing? I'm sorry. And this is going to be cornbread dressing, by the way. I know some people don't make cornbread dressing. What okay. did you ask me? I put one cup of okay. flour. What's next? One cup of cornmeal. Not cornmeal mix, but cornmeal. And there's a difference? There's a difference. Cornmeal mix already has the baking powder. I guess it has the flour in it. I'm not really sure. I've never used it. Okay. But it's just a, a quicker way of doing it. Okay, and if we were making cornbread, we would actually put one to two tablespoons of sugar in this. We're, I know there's a big controversy on cornbread. Let me help you. Yeah, I already uh, had oh, some in there. Oh, okay, that's why. So. Um, there's a big controversy, sweet or not sweet cornbread. We like ours slightly sweet, but not very. But since we're making dressing, I'm going to put zero sugar. I don't want sweet dressing. That, that would not be good. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to put one tablespoon of baking powder. All right. A good full tablespoon. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the eggs. I'm going to put two eggs in this. If you were making this plant-based, you would simply use flax eggs or you could use, um, gosh, what's the little thing? I can't think of it. Anyway, flax eggs. I bet it'll be, be on wonderful. the graphic right down here. Yes, there you go. Because <laughs> I always use flax eggs. I'll so talk to the editor I'm and see if the, that. that person can do okay, it. Okay, so you've got that. Now, the only, the last thing for you is one teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to go ahead and beat the eggs a little bit. They don't have to be well beaten, but, but a bit. That kind of helps with the rising, too. Can I ask you a question about the uh, difference between dressing and stuffing? Because yes. they're kind of the same, aren't they? They're basically the very same thing, except stuffing is put inside the bird. Inside the bird. Yeah. Which makes sense, stuff. Okay. And then dressing is baked in a pan. We never, back when we used to have turkey, we never did. Like a casserole pan type thing. We pan. always did a casserole. Yeah. I mean, that's how I grew up. Did your mom used to put it inside a bird? Uh, Do I don't remember? think so. Yeah. I think we had dressing and yeah. not stuffing. Yeah. Supposedly that puts a lot more flavor in it, but it's also very dangerous to put, it can be dangerous to put it in the bird. Because if you don't get it up to a certain temperature, whoo. You could have some major food poisoning. There's an old red fox joke. It's the only clean one I think he ever told. But uh, <laughs> he tells the story of uh, he's got a new young wife that's uh, pretty inexperienced in the kitchen. He goes out and kills a turkey for Thanksgiving, and he brings it home, and she prepares it and cooks it. And it looks wonderful. She pulls it out of the oven. He's a little bit surprised. And he said, uh, what did you stuff it with? And she said, stuff it. This one wasn't hollow. Oh, she goes, no. well, do you remember our first turkey? <laughs> That's right. Uh, your parents were coming over, right? Yes. We lived in a lot. We had only been married for two week, two months. Two months. And first of all, we didn't get the turkey properly Defrosted. Thawed, so we, it was real cold that the night before Thanksgiving. And so 
we opened a bedroom windows where it was That's super right. chilly in there and let it sit out there and went and checked it every hour and tried to pull it. And we, in one side of they the They had a little packet of stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, we got the one. Giblets I think or whatever. we got the neck out and we thought, okay, we're done. Yeah. We didn't know there was another little packet in there. So <laughs> we had a surprise when we cut the turkey. Okay, I'm going to say right now, uh, I put in, after I beat the eggs, I put in one cup of milk and then I added one fourth cup of cooking oil. I mean, I used the vegetable oil, whichever oil you like. I wouldn't use olive oil. That would be too strong of a flavor, unless you used light olive oil. Okay. So I'm going to mix those up now. You put the salt in? Yes, I did. Check the replay. No, I did. It's in there. Are you sure? I am sure. <laughs> okay. 100%. Okay. You got to trust me on that, boss. I trust you. Okay. All righty. So... This is all we're going to do, and if you are plant-based also, you can use plant-based milk. It works just fine in okay. cornbread dressing. I mean, we make this all the time. And sometimes we replace some of the oil with apple, uh, unsweetened applesauce. This is Thanksgiving. We're not going to try to cut calories, so we're just going to do it regular. We're going to load it up. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let me make sure everything is in there. Okay. I would say if you have a something for a holiday meal that you want us to try to make or you have a recipe for, mm -hmm. post it in the comments and uh, that could be others. You, you I'm still, still looking this. for that salt. I, I promise you. <laughs> you got to trust me on this. You don't want unsalted corn. No, corn it would not be good. Okay, so we're going to put this in and we're going to mix them together, but you don't want to get real aggressive with it because it can make it kind of tough. Okay. So just mix it. You want to do that? Sure. Part? And I'm going to go turn the oven up. And I, I always cook my cornbread in a cast iron skillet. I like to heat it on the stove top, then add a little bit of oil, and it makes it really crispy on that yeah, outside. The outside gets kind of crisp and yes, kind yes. of good. You don't want a lot of oil, just a little bit. And uh, But if you don't have a cast iron skillet, you could absolutely use any kind of glass casserole for sure. Search out your local flea markets and find yeah. a cast iron skillet. We yes. already told the story of one of your skillets yeah. that you bought and, yeah, this is a and brought back story. to life. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You like so, that? I think we're good. Okay, so we're going to put this on the stove, and then while that's cooking, we're going to deal, deal with some of the other ingredients, right, yes. that we need for that. Yes. What we're going to do, we're going to bake this off, then we're going to have to let it cool enough that we can break it up. And normally I would do this like the day before. The cornbread. And then we're going to put it in the oven to dry it off. Some people leave cornbread out for days before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. to make it um, be, be dried out. Right. But sometimes it can get stale tasting. So what's the bread for now? We're going to add that too. Add this. Yeah, we had so another is... loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> and yesterday we put it on our kitchen table. And our dog climbed up into the chair and decided to drug down the bread and took to that off. So, so this is not part of that. No, stuff. I threw that loaf away. I thought, no, okay, she didn't. She only ate on one little end. We no, no, we no. threw it away. No. All right, so this is stale uh, white bread. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, very good. All right, so join us now over at the stove. Okay, the oven is preheated to 425, and I've had the skillet heating on about a medium low. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to it. The first time I did this, I thought, wow, that's going to be burnt on the bottom, but it doesn't, amazingly. And I just kind of run the oil all around the skillet. And like I said, this could be done in a glass, a glass casserole instead and skip this part. But we lo really do like how crispy this makes the cornbread. Okay. Alrighty, I think we're in good shape. Going to throw it in. Hear that sizzle? That's what we want is the sizzle. The sizzle. <laughs> and then we're going to throw it in the oven and we're going to bake it for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we're going to take it out, let it cool enough that we can handle it, and we'll move on from there. Sometimes I heat this even a little bit more. It didn't sizzle a lot, but it's enough. I don't know if you can see that we got little bubbles around it. Okay, I'm going to throw it in the oven. 20, 25 minutes, we'll be back. Okay, well, 
while the cornbread's cooking, let's go ahead and get the vegetables cut up. The dressing, I, the way I like dressing is almost as much vegetables or more than the actual bread, or at least as much. I like a lot of vegetables in it. So what are we going to start with? Okay, we're going to cut up celery, celery leaves later, onions, and carrots. How big a chunks? Well, I want very, let me, can I show you a way to probably Absolutely. do it? Absolutely. Makes it more manageable to cut it like this and then cut, because we want pretty small. Okay. Then cut it into strips and then line them up. Oh. Chop them as small as you can. It's yeah. also faster to do it that way. So. Now, do you remember when the kids were little and we would make uh, ants on a log? Oh, I sure do. They love that. So we take celery, peanut butter, yeah. peanut butter right on the celery, and uh, then the, ra was it raisins on raisins. it? Raisins. Those were the ants. Yeah, those were the ants yes. on that. Those were good times. Those were great times. I wonder if they make those. I wonder if our daughter makes those for I her kids to ask now. Her. Or next time we have the grandkids, yeah. we'll make them ants log and tell them their mom used to like this yeah. when she was uh, we should do that. a kid. Yeah, just for... I know they like all those things, so I would think they would like them a lot. So This is good. Thanksgiving meals, you have some memorable ones that uh, you did that well, you had in the past? this is kind of a weird one that my father worked... We had a farm, and, and so a lot of his work was on the farm, but he also had a side job in the oil field. And they were doing what was called back then pulling a well. I don't really know what that means. It, was, it had stopped producing it is what I think it means, and then they did something that made the oil start coming up. So, maybe the pipes that are now in the ground, I maybe they so. pull those out and I check them. So. Or I don't know exactly. But they were in the middle of pulling a well, and so... We always had Thanksgiving together, and he could not, so he couldn't be there until late that afternoon or evening. So, and we always had Thanksgiving at lunchtime. And um, so we felt so bad that he was having to work on Thanksgiving Day that we made everything, but we waited, of course, till he came in to for us to eat anything. And... Um, I think OU, University of Oklahoma, was playing that day. It seems like it was some big football game. He wasn't a big football watcher, but he liked OU. And so in our allegiance to our father, even though none of us had zero interest in OU, we sat and watched the OU game for him. <laughs> oh, so that way when he got in, you could say, hey. Yeah, we, w we didn't really tell him what all happened because we didn't even understand it really. Because <laughs> we had zero interest, but we watched it for him. Because there was no VHS, there was yes. no recordings of yes. such. Yes, oh, not at all. And, I, and one of my Thanksgiving memories is, uh, I remember that was, my mother was not a good cook. She was just not a good cook. But that woman can make some desserts. And on Thanksgiving, even though <laughs> And your was dad, like, he was a skinny guy, but oh, he, was a little he bit. loved his yeah. desserts, cookies oh and ice cream. Goodness, so much. So on Thanksgiving, even if it were just the four of us, she would cook like three, four pies. <laughs> so I remember that because I love pie. How'd you stay out of pies until dad got home? I think we did eat a piece of pie. Okay. I think right. that was our lunch as we, we went ahead and had a piece of pie. All right. But yeah, so, so how now, about you? Uh, my stepdad, uh, he liked to hunt. Gerald. Gerald. Yeah. Gerald was a big time hunter. Um, he grew up in around our, our area and that was just a way of life. I mean, that's how they got a lot of their food that they ate. And so I wasn't really, I was never really big into hunting. I would go out there because I got to hang out with my stepdad and sometimes my brother and maybe an uncle or two, but uh, anyway, they were hunting um, turkey, and uh, anyway, but I remember one time, uh, I think it was a 410, which is a smaller shotgun, I, I know nothing about guns, forgive me, uh, but anyway, uh, he saw one and let me take a shot at it. And I deliberately missed because yeah. I did. Uh, <laughs> I, plant-based <laughs> Well, I'm going to lose my man card in Oklahoma for that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I probably would have missed anyway. But I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mom had got from Safeway a frozen turkey anyway, so we still had turkey. But uh, I remember 
that we would rabbit hunt and uh, so rabbit hunting was a little easier because you could look for the tracks in the snow if there had been snow gotcha. um, but again I wasn't very good at it and they would squirrel hunt oh my goodness it sounds like the deep south but gosh uh, frog gigging uh, they did that which I didn't much care for but it was fun getting out at night with flashlight in a boat did you eat oh, the frogs? Yeah, we did ate. Did you like them? You know, I kind of did. Yeah, I've heard they taste like chicken. That's what they always say, but in my little young eight, nine-year-old mind, they kind of did. Mm -hmm. And maybe we were just hungry, but now I know they're a delicacy. Right. But, you know, so is escargot, and uh, right. you couldn't get me near that. That's so funny. But, yeah, I remember. Now, would you say that's enough? Now we're going to do all these. All those? We, we well, put a lot of vegetables going to take a in while. Our, it's going to take a while. <laughs> Better have lots of stories. <laughs> well, I remember that same step uncle, I mean stepfather, one time, we'd been married quite a while, and he gave us a frozen wild turkey. Yes. And I was real excited, like, we were meat eaters then, and I was really excited. I thought, this is going to be the best turkey we have ever had. And they're not like in the grocery store where there's no. this big basketball-sized thing. It's like a fat chicken. Uh, but he was real skinny. He was, there wasn't much to him. No, there wasn't. I'm saying it's... it's yeah. But, uh, so you cooked it, as so I, I recall. I made dressing. I made, like, a Thanksgiving-type meal. It wasn't Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I was so excited, even though it looked really weird. And that was the toughest thing I had. We threw it away. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't know how to cook it. Well, um, yeah, it was, um, the gesture was appreciated. It was very much if, appreciated. Uh, Gerald was listening in heaven. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't tell that if he's still alive. No, but his wife is. Uh, well, that is true. <laughs> Marilyn is still. That is true. So sorry, she might hit, uh, sorry. But maybe it's an acquired taste. Maybe if you grew up with that and that was normal. It was very wild tasting, which I'd never even had anything wild, so I don't know what that means. But Maybe it's what they really taste like. Maybe in the stores they're so injected with I'm sure. all the stuff that God knows they put Absolutely. in those things to make them abnormally big and round. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so true. Now, in this dressing, as I recall, we used to make the meal out of it. There was no turkey, but you would put like little chicken pieces or something yeah, that, in that, the dressing. Yeah. That would be not on Thanksgiving. Just sometimes, a meal. Yeah, sometimes once or twice during the year we would just get um, taste for dressing. And so, yeah, I would just cook a chicken and shred it and put it in the dressing. And that is very good. Yeah. It's really very good. It's kind of a dressed down meal from Thanksgiving. But on Thanksgiving we always would have ham and turkey. We haven't for, what, nine years or so? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Would you say that we're eating a little bit more vegetarian these days than we were when we're eating exclusively plant-based? Yeah, we've kind of let some some dairy products and eggs get into our diet. Yeah. Um, still, don't, still mostly plant-based for sure. Yeah. But yes, we have. Because we were very strict before of none of that. So, yeah, we It have. gets a bit of a challenge, too, because when you start, um, we have a grandson that's uh, gluten-free, and now our son-in-law is, and that's a challenge if you're serving mm -hmm. meat eaters, then you're serving vegetarians, mm -hmm. then you're serving yeah. a plant-based, and then, so it, it just makes it, for you, it's got to be very difficult finding, okay, I can make this, but... I also have to make that yeah, for absolutely. the gluten-free folks. Last Thanksgiving, we had all kinds of people eat, come to our home for a Thanksgiving meal. And yes, um, we, we did almost all plant-based, but then we had to do some gluten-free for those people too. Let me go ahead and dump this. I'll have some room. We're just going to put this bowl. Later, we're going to be sautéing it. You, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just... Why do you have to saute it before you put it in the oven? It could come out crunchy vegetables. Crunchy vegetables in a dressing, not good. Not good. Not good. So I would ask, why are we, you have a food processor that I believe we paid some pretty good, <laughs> <laughs> pretty good money for. Why aren't you doing that so we can stand we here and talk could. and uh, I feel be like together? This, it's more uniform here. You either, I do use my food processor and certain things I would be just fine with that. With this, I'd rather do it myself and have it very uniform. 
food processor, either you end up with different sizes or chunks or you process so long, at least in mine, and I have a good one, um, or, or there's not much texture because you've just processed it to, to way to sh little shreds. So anyway, but anyway, back to last, and back to last uh, Thanksgiving. So I had to, I made, I bought rolls from the store, that, those kind that you Which I know. really easy kind. I know that breaks your heart too. It does, <laughs> it does. But I also made um, gluten-free plant-based rolls and that was quite the, that was quite the journey. And those were not particularly good. They were a little dry, which is real normal with gluten. Because they don't have the, the gluten to cause a rise. Yeah, and they that... did rise really well. They looked good, but they looked better than they tasted. But for the gluten-free people, since they're used to that, mm -hmm. they they thought it was good. Yeah. So it it all worked. And then um, then we all we also did have just some sliced turkey, like from a ham place that's really good turkey. We didn't have to handle meat right. or deal with meat, so that worked out good. And then we put, did a ham that, um, so everybody, I think everybody went away satisfied. Yeah, I think they did. Now we have uh, some coming this year as a chef, as, a, as you prepare things, we don't know how many's coming. No. <laughs> so, we have a, good, a, a little bit of an idea. I mean, it no, could be sure. six, it could be 16. I think it's going to be eight or nine. Eight or nine, okay. So much that's manageable. Not, that's and, very, very manageable. So. so some of the folks that uh, came last year uh, tasted the gluten-free rolls <laughs> and decided... Uh, I'm not going there again. Not going to go to that house. But some, oh, no, uh, some are going other places yes. and... Uh, and then some are coming for Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas. We don't know yeah. how many's coming for Christmas either, do we? Right, right, right. So, so now that ahead. I'm uh, retired, we don't have to worry about me getting called away yeah. because we've had some meals and even company that uh, weather has happened and I would have mm -hmm. to leave. Yep, yep. And you would lose your dishwasher. <laughs> That's true. But I always mostly just felt sad that you were having to work sometimes. Because if it was weather, you weren't just working. You were many times working 12 hours, yeah. 14 hours. So it was not a good, not a perfect situation. So I'm thrilled to death. Well, thank we you. We don't have to think about it this year. Thank you. Uh, Joanne got me as a retirement gift a trip to the races uh, in Austin. And so... Formula One. Formula One. I went there for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And on Sunday, the day of the race, 440,000 people were at this uh, track. And it was uh, one of the most spectacular things I have ever seen. Okay, so these are the ingredients. You may go ahead and put your onions in. What is this green stuff now? That's a celery leaves. I really like Leave them out. Okay, I'm how about the, add you them, the onions? The onions yes, if you can do it that way. If I can do that. <laughs> sure I can. Oh. Nice. You happy with that, boss? Yes, I am. Except you missed one <laughs> celery. <laughs> oh. oh my. So how long did that cook in the oven? It cooks about 20 minutes. I'm getting ready to take it out. It cooks usually 20 to 25 minutes. So, um, and what we're going to do now, I'm going to take out the oven, let it cool a little bit. It won't take too long. I'll put some gloves on that'll help me to do it a little sooner. Then I'm going to smoosh it up into, into little pieces, and we're going to put it back in the oven to dry it out for a fast drying out rather than a slow okay. drying out. And while it's drying out in the oven, we'll go ahead and saute our vegetables. Sounds so, good. Yeah. Uh, the bread has cooled off enough that I think with these little gloves to help a little that I can go ahead and break it up. And you can break it up into whatever size you want. I try to, and it can be irregular sizes, all that. Because when we put the broth on it, it's going to all come together anyway. Um, and, oh, I turned on the convection on the oven. Uh, I'm going to dry it out in the oven. If you don't have a convection oven, you can still dry it in the oven. Just put it on real low, like maybe 2, 225. And... Uh, That'll get the job done. It's so, okay, this is all broken up. I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and cubed the little bit of bread that I was gonna to add to it. This is, was like a store-bought kind, of, like a grocery store kind of ciabatta, since someone ate our bread. Uh, so okay, I'm gonna slip it in the oven, and then we'll come back, 
and we'll go ahead and saute the vegetables and hopefully be ready to put it all together. I checked the cornbread, it's drying out very nicely, so I'm going to go ahead and start sauteing the vegetables, that way we're ready to go with it. And by the way, you don't have to dry your cornbread in the oven, this was just a fast way to do it. If you want to bake the cornbread the day before and let it dry out overnight, it'll be fine. So, you ready for this? I am. Okay, and I'm going to use um, some of the broth to cook this in. You could use oil, absolutely. I just. I'm used to using the broth. vegetable broth. So all that's going to go in. Okay. Yeah, that's a vegetable broth. This broth I am using. I've already. I always. I. I saw not long ago that rather than the, that the cartoned broth that you buy is actually just reconstituted broth like the bouillon. So I stopped buying the cartons and I started. Would you get a spatula or yeah, that pink one might be the best. So it's kind of wide. Um, so I stopped buying the cartons because they were always kind of a pain in the butt, like if you didn't use it all and all that. And I just reconstitute. I'll show you when we put it all together what kind we are using. You used to make your own vegetable broth. I did used to make my own and I stopped doing it. I need to do that again for sure. Okay, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Put a little salt in it, but go real light. Okay. Uh, we're going to go light because we don't know... We're going to be putting that broth in it, and all broth seems to have, unless you buy no salt or low salt broth, it has so much salt already in it. And some pepper, if you would. You got it. And then we're going to cover this to help it to go ahead and get done a little bit faster. A covered pan cooks faster? It sure does. It holds that steam in and does it faster. Good tip. And then later, we will put everything together and slip it in the oven. This is this is a long drawn out. Turn off my oven here. This is a long drawn out recipe for sure. If you don't make the cornbread ahead of time, it would shorten the process. If you made that the day before or something like that. Yeah, that would help. But you're still a sauteing the vegetables. And like I say, you don't have to saute vegetables, but I highly, highly recommend Softens it. Softens them up a little bit. Softens them up. They don't have to be perfectly soft, but they're not going to be in the oven long enough that dressing with crunchy vegetables, not good. I love crunchy vegetables, not in dressing. So. Uh, all right. So cornbread, about how long did that take uh, it took to about, dry out? Let's see. I think I set that for 30 minutes and I'm going to go ahead and take it out Okay. because it is done. I mean, all we're doing is drying out. And the reason you dry out the bread or the cornbread is just to absorb the broth better. Gotcha. So, okay, watch out, Miss Sophie. Go ahead and take that out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's nice and nice and crunchy. Nice. It's ready. And I'm going to go ahead and set my stove on 350, getting ready to put the pan of dressing in the oven. So... Okay, I'm out here in the herb garden going to gather for our dressing some fresh uh, parsley and I'm going to have to cut around. We have some of the black swallowtail caterpillars. I'm going to make sure not not disturb any of those and then I'm going to also grab some sage. Okay, here's some that looks like it's free of the caterpillars. Also, you're fighting the weather, right? That yes. Will survive the 20s? Um, high, twen high 20s, yes. Yes. And that's pretty much what we're going to have. But if it got low enough, we may lose them. But usually these all actually live till next year. So they'll be fine. They'll be fine. We have quite a few caterpillars still going on here. So I'm going to find some areas where they are not. Every year I let the caterpillars do what they need to do. Those turn into beautiful butterflies. Yeah, black swallowtail butterflies. They look very, very much like the monarch. Man, there's a lot of them in here. They look very much like the monarch caterpillars. There's a very slight difference, and, and I have a hard time telling the difference. So that's going to be more than enough. And no caterpillars harmed in this. And then I'm going to come over here and grab some sage. I have a little sage plant here. I'm going to use poultry seasoning in it, which has sage in it. But I also want to add a little bit of fresh sage. like our carrots, onion, and celery are, are, are soft. You don't want it super soft, but, but soft, starting to soften. So I'm going to go ahead and add, I have some celery leaves. I'm going to go ahead and add those in. And I'm going to go ahead and add in 
some fresh sage and some fresh parsley that we just got out of the garden this You just morning. went and cut that uh, outside and uh, we're trying to fight the weather because cold air is coming in. So and rain. that is right straight yes. out of your herb bed. And we got a little passenger into the house. <laughs> we did. When I started cutting it up, I, I was very careful not to take, not to disturb the um, Caterpillars, swallowtail caterpillars. Well, one got, got a little ride into the house. It'll oh. just be extra fiber, though. For no, this. <laughs> no, no. We took him back out there and oh, okay. made sure he, he was safe. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and add these. So since this is ready and our bread has dried out in the oven, we are going to go ahead. I'm going to stir this in, and then we're going to go ahead and take all of our ingredients over to the center island and um, put this together and then be ready to put it in the oven. I've turned the oven up to 350. We're ready to put all our different components together. Let's go ahead and put the bread in here. Okay. You, you might help me kind of make sure it goes in. Is it still hot? And it doesn't matter in what. No, it's already cooled down. And you can hear that it's, it has toast. That's crunchy. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter at this point how you put this together other than the raw eggs. We want to hold off on those. Then we'll empty this. And as you can see, our, our vegetable to bread ratio is pretty much, don't you think, about 50-50? I would say so. Yeah, and this is still hot, obviously. Doesn't hurt a thing because we're getting ready to put it right into the oven. So it seems pretty solid. There's going to be some t type of liquid or some sort right. in here. That is a part. And when people look at the recipe, they may get a little frustrated. This is not a recipe that is exact because it depends on how moist you like your dressing. We like a quite moist dressing. Um, but some people may like it like it's mashed potatoes. It kind of stays yeah, in one place. Absolutely. absolutely. Ours is a little bit on the runny side, but not yeah, overly so. For sure. For sure. I'm going to go ahead and mix this together. Let's see, let me, would you get me a big spoon? This doesn't want to do it quite sure. as well. When, so you, when you were growing up, your mama made it a little bit different. Is that too big? No, that'll work. Just kind of turn it over. What did your mom do that was different than this? You said she well, was she good. she put boiled egg, boiled, chopped, hard boiled, chopped eggs in it. Actually, if, if you're not plant-based, it is delicious. It makes it very rich. Okay. Uh, like in this amount, I'd probably do about three eggs. Um, and this is not going to be plant-based because we are going to put some raw eggs in it. And all that is is to hold the dressing together, give it a little more form. But if you leave that out because you want to be plant-based, it'll just be a little looser, but it still works just fine. And normally that's how we make it. We well, just, can you use that egg substitute uh, stuff? I do not know because I, I've never used that. Okay. I, I so would this think is, so, but I'm not sure. All right. There's a substitute for plant-based called Just Egg, and, and that may work just fine. I'm just not sure. Okay, now what I'm going to add in... And again, in my recipe, it's very vague. It says two to four tablespoons of poultry seasoning. That's because do you like it real herby or not so much? Okay. So I'm going to go with the two tablespoons because um, I don't want it quite so. And also, we added in some the fresh sage and the fresh uh, parsley, so we don't we don't need quite so much. It, it didn't really need the fresh sage, so if you're not growing sage, there's no reason to have to buy sage in the grocery store. It's really expensive, um, but I, I like that fresh sage in there. So, okay, so we're going to do all that. Now we're going to start putting, I'm going to go grab the, walk around the dog, <laughs> and grab <laughs> the broth. Someday we're going to have a video and one of us is going to trip on the dog. It's going to be our kitchen's little speed bump right here. It slows you down in the kitchen. It'll probably be the best video ever. <laughs> probably so. Okay, I'm going to start adding this in. And like I said, um, you can use the carton broth or you can just reconstitute. What I'm using today is called no chicken uh, broth. They spell chicken weird though, don't they? C -H -I. On this one, I'm not sure. You want me to go grab it? Yeah. Yeah, let me grab it right quick. You can keep adding some more of that. This company has just regular vegetable broth and they have no beef. It's better than bouillon, no chicken base. No chicken base. And what brand so, is this? Oh, you just said. Better than bouillon. Better mm -hmm. than bouillon. Mm -hmm. Where did you find this at? Do you I remember? I think I ordered it a online. Local store? 
But oh. local stores do have it. There's more choices if you go to like um, Whole Foods or online. But yeah, I, I use that. Okay. Keep Good. it around all the time. And you keep it refrigerated? Yes. What? It says you don't have to, but it's better to. We use it so slowly that I do it. Yeah, I would keep it. So we keep it adding to it until it's quite wet. We may use all this, we may not. And then if you add too much, it's so easy. I put foil over it when I put it in the oven to help it to get heated up. But once it's heated up, then we take the foil off and let it brown a little on top. So if you got a little too much broth on it, then all you have to do is leave the foil off for a little longer and it will pull out that moisture in the oven. So it's just according to your taste and but you can correct it in the oven. If there's not enough broth that looks too dry when it's about done, add a little broth. Mm -hmm. So let me see at the bottom. Is there any broth like collected at the bottom? Can you tell? I don't yeah, think so. I'd say a little bit more then. So we do like ours are quite moist. You are the broth boss. <laughs> you know what it what needs. What I've always wanted to be. That's it. <laughs> Let me check my... Yeah, we've got everything in it now except... We, we didn't put much salt in the cooking vegetables because broth has a lot of salt. Okay. So now we're going to taste of it before we put... We're going to put two raw eggs. So we're going to taste it first. This is not a pleasant... Great. Oh, that tastes so good kind of thing. But... I like the vegetables, they're soft enough, but they're, yes, some um, firmness. Fine. I think it needs just a little bit, but not too much. I do too. And I think it needs some pepper also. All right. That's a pretty big deal of it. All right. Please. Then you'll stir it and we'll taste of it again. We well, do want to say thank you for your comments and your questions. Uh, they have been very helpful. Help guide us on where you want this channel to go. More garden stuff. Well, that'll taper off a little bit in the winter, though we are going to do another winter sewing segment. That was one of our first episodes, wasn't it? I think it was one of our first. I think Jackfruit uh, did very well. Mm -hmm. We've also had some feedback from some of you on some re recent episodes. We want to kind of give a shout out uh, to some of the folks uh, that took the time to leave comments. Helps the algorithms when you comment and you like. Beth Bullard really liked the pumpkin bread. Oh, good. She yeah. Did she try it? She said she was going to, but Great. she definitely liked it as well. Great. Thanks, Storm Beth. Chasing Gal, who comments cool. on a lot of our stuff. Yes, She's, she does. Um, Thank you, Storm Chasing Gal. Yeah, That's and awesome. she likes uh, seeing Sophie. Okay. When we show, we'll show Sophie. Her here in a we will bit. show Sophie. Uh, Donna Watts um, liked the carrot cakes and wondered if we could add almonds or pecans or other things yes. in that so yes i'm actually surprised we didn't it would be good either in the cake or in the icing yeah mm -hmm. so leave a comment and uh that really helps out as well share it and like it and hit the post notification bell all those things kind of help okay. our little channel grow we've not been posting much on turnips and tornadoes on the Turnips and Tornadoes Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my fault, uh, but now I have no excuse because I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I have retired. I love it. So we'll start posting more stuff over there. I think we have a Twitter page as well, which I've not, uh, I've neglected. So I need to get active on the Turnips and Tornado Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. Yeah. I don't know why you didn't have time with 60, 70 hours of work a week. I'm not sure why. Just a slacker, I guess, boss. Okay, are you happy with this? I'm happy with this. Oh, we got to add the raw egg just so, for a little form. And like I say, if you are plant-based, just leave the eggs out and it'll just be a little looser and it will still be great. We've done that. That's how we normally do it. I just kind of right. wanted to make a more classic... Right. I mean, we said at the beginning, we're going to be mostly plant-based, but there's going to be a lot of uh, vegetarian stuff yeah. on here. We're never going to make meat, uh, but they'll be plant-based and, and vegetarian, and we're going to tell you yeah. uh, which is which. Yeah. And for the meat eaters, we're not against you. We're no. just not our thing. Just not our thing. And so for us to tell someone how to cook meat... That, that would not be good. We're not going to tell you how to live. You live your own life. Eat what you want to eat. We're just showing you how we do it, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going to pour it. We have a, an oiled pan, the 9 by 13 casserole I sprayed pan. that down with mm -hmm. uh, some vegetable cooking spray, spray. Mm -hmm. cooking spray. So this bad boy. Help. Let me. 
Well, uh, I'll, I want you, okay. I'll do the uh, heavy lifting, okay. and if you'll put it in here. So when it's in the oven, basically all we're doing is just heating it up. It, I'm guessing it'll be about 30 to 40 minutes. Wow, I'm going everywhere. And if this doesn't all fit in here, we can do another pan, but I, let me see, I think it will. And if you like yours real solid, just squish it down a little bit. I don't think there's enough for another pan. And like I said, I don't think there is either. You don't like anything like, to go to waste. I don't like to waste food. <laughs> oh, I always tell myself, don't worry about that. I don't like wasting food. So we're going to cover this with foil. Bake it probably for about 30 minutes and then take the foil off. See if we need to add some more moisture to it or not. And then it'll be ready. Foil and in the oven. Yep. What did you say? 350 did you say? 350. 350. Yeah. And uh, did you say how long? I think for, I'm going to take the foil off in about 30 minutes, okay. check the moisture, and then we'll go from there. And since we put hot vegetable, hot sauteed vegetables in here, that's going to make it cook in the oven a little. It's got a little head start on okay. it. Okay. So. That makes sense. So we're going to cook this. We'll come back. We'll taste test it. We'll show you Sophie, and we'll see you on the other side. Well, it looks pretty good. Yeah, looks good. Another bonus of putting lots of vegetables in is that it makes a pretty dressing. It mm. does. It's very colorful. You added just a little bit more vegetable I did. broth. I checked it at 30 minutes, took the foil off, added a tiny bit more broth. That's totally up to how moist you like it to be. And yes. Yes. So. Okay. You know, so. I think it's done now. It's gonna be blazing hot. Did you let it cool any at all? Like five to ten minutes, maybe. Okay. This is the consistency I kind of like. Me too. I um, like it to be moist. Some people do it real dry, and then they put gravy over it. We don't have to put gravy over this because it's already quite moist. Okay. Tell me what you think. Okay, let me give it a try. Hopefully you'll have a good holiday with a lot of people coming over. Mm -hmm. And i uh, like to see what you're going to be making. What are your thoughts? What what our viewers are making? No, it's what, very good. Yeah. It's very hot. It's very hot. <laughs> it's a very good. Lots. Oh, wow. Yeah. Lots of I can make a meal out of that. Me too. It's very, very good. Absolutely. Thank you for subscribing and commenting. And again, like to see your holiday uh, recipes or your ideas of things that you'd like to see us make. You did good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Have a happy holiday whenever that is. And uh, our hope is that you'll uh, try this and enjoy it. Have a great Thanksgiving. Take care. All right. We didn't show Sophie. Oh, we better show her. Yep, yep. We promised <laughs> a Sophie sighting. Fortunately, we don't have to go very far because she's always she's right never here. Never very far from us. So we learned she sticks with us all the time, and if we're in different rooms, she runs back and forth. And we learned from someone who has an Australian Shepherd that that's their thing. They think they're hurting us, hurting us, keeping watch over us, guarding us. You say hi. Hey, girl. Yeah. All right, from Sophie, Joanne, and I. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Take care. You can't have any dressing. <laughs> Sorry.